Alrighty, everyone. I'm going to kind of be your lore master here with these team lineups as we go. Um, we're going to try to speed through them a little bit quickly. I will say, if you signed up today, we don't have your graphic done. Showbeck, I'm sorry. You're not going to be on the tier list. That might save you some embarrassment later on, though. We'll oh, no. If does, <laughs> or if it doesn't. <laughs> All right. But we are starting off with Team Gorilla Milk. Uh, I'm going to embarrassingly uh, missay some names, but we're going to rock it anyway. Um, Antidus on the healer, Death Pain and Emilios on the DPS, Table Slam on the hybrid as well as Yi. When you look at this team, Table Slam and Death Pain have a lot of HC reps under their belt. This team's going to be willing to grind their faces off to get to the end. The question is, are they going to be able to live to it? I think is going to be their biggest uh, takeaway throughout the event. Um, so that's my take on Gorilla Milk so far, but welcome to the competition. Look at that double hybrid and leather worker in the group. A table yeah, slave, no true warrior tank. It's going to be interesting to see how that goes for him. Yeah, see you next circus. So, I mean, if you look at the lineup, you have Parla on warrior. You have Keksek on priest. You have Omp with the roll swap to mage. Ellen Degenerate on the, on the rogue DPS. Peter on the hunter. Calamity on the paladin. This team stacked top to bottom. They have to be probably the strongest team in the preseason. If you just look at every name top to bottom, there could be some others that we'll see later on. But the, what I will say about this team, you see a lot of alchemy. These guys are willing to risk it for the biscuit. They're going to have to be, you know, they're going to be doing some flashy plays one to 60, and that could be their downfall uh, uh, despite their, their very, very high level of play coming into this event. That's so gross. I, did, I just realized the only rogue that can stealth doesn't have to be yep. alchemy is a uh, <laughs> wink wink yep but didn't we get an update here on the uh, lnd gen didn't he also die today isn't this oh, confirmed oh no is that they, the clip that they got... died two they baited me they literally just the me saying oh by the way my character died and i was like yo give me the clip and she was like oh it was two days ago i'm already level 22 again with 20 hours I'm like bro you can't bait me like that so. <laughs> You know, she, she did die. She pulled a Gordon and died early, but she played 18 hours last yesterday, so she's already back in the game. <laughs> All right. We got a lot of teams to go through. We got Nemesis here, Project Nemesis. You know, this is this team's repping the horde. I got to scroll through to see my notes on these guys. One of the few horde teams in the event, they got Bakugan on tank. Uh, I'm not even going to try. Jeff on the healer, Dwash on the DPS, Enderer on the hunter. It's a name I recognize. Kelzu on the warlock, and Hydranicus on the shaman. So the shaman being represented as well. Um, you know, I think this is a question for a lot of the horde teams in the event, and a question for Nemesis as well. Will the bit of a routing uh, advantage that Horde might have in this event come out to play for Nemesis. Uh, will they be able to hit the theory crafting hard enough to make some plays? I think that's going to be the question for a lot of Horde teams we see. Uh, but that is Project Nemesis. Dude, we got DeWoss. He won the Ragefire Chasm, the Wayland Caverns Cup. He's a, he's a nice. kid to some of these tournaments. There's a Taylor Leatherworker in this group. Look out for these guys. Uh, not just going the de facto NG Alk. Mm-hmm. All right, let's try this. The Sudbury Blueberry Bulldogs. Um, these guys are rocking Alliance, uh, as many teams are. Um, they're going to be bringing Mage Lock, and that's going to be a combination that we see a lot throughout this competition. We have Dolo on the tank, JJ, Frankie JJ on the healer, Wheel Snipe, Selly on the hunter, Goody on the mage, Hitch on the warlock, and Shorcy on the druid. I'm interested to see how Mage Lock goes. It's definitely the most uh, spell cleave you can go. Uh, in this format because you can't run double mage uh, so I'm interested to see if you know combined with the hunter combined with the hellfire the warlock if they are just going to try to zug zug aoe themselves to victory here but uh, definitely a risky gameplay you see a lot of engineering with these guys as well so see if they can keep that up uh, WCYD so all right this is all rumor my sources have not confirmed uh, but my sources are telling me that this could be a team of former Grizzly players uh, the, the classic Wild Guild Grizzly uh, if this is true then they are immediately one of the favorites if not then they are relatively unknown Atoba on the tank Saint on the healer Gertash on the hunter Mori on the mage and N Sipid on the hybrid shaman but I do only see five players on this team so they are gonna have to make it to 60 safely without that extra sub as a backup plan so but if it's grizzly they could do it the super lethal outstanding warriors aka slow we see some familiar names here calyx on the tank tomathon on the priest zidane on the hunter blenderer on the rogue this time kekin wrecked on the mage and our very own gordon ramsey on druid this team 
um, is looking very strong from lineup perspective. I don't think slow is going to be an accurate representation of these guys once they get rolling. Um, you know, they're underselling and over delivering so that we always love that play style. So we'll see if they're able to do it here. They're full NG. All these guys are like HC Elite Road Direct veterans. Kalix is one of the tanks. Gordon Ramsay, does he need an introduction? The most, the highest buffing Feral. Blinderer was there. Zidane, they were all there for it. This is an experienced, high level hardcore group of players right here, man. Look out for slow. Mm -hmm. Work in progress. I gotta shuffle to see where my notes are here as well. Work in progress. Yeah, so. They're, these are one of the teams. They got Era on tank, Brito on the Warlock, Sotas on the Mage, UB, UBBQ on the Hunter, and Disco Fruity on the Paladin. One of those teams that is running no subs, so survival is going to be at the essence. They do have the Paladin for some extra protection. But honestly, one of those uh, you know underdog teams that's really looking to make a main name for themselves. You're going to see some teams with some players we haven't seen a ton before. But you know this is an opportunity, equal opportunity employers here at Hardcore All Stars, so they are able to make a, a name for themselves just like anyone else is in this event. So hopefully we see some new faces uh, etch their face on the uh, Mount Rushmore of Hardcore. The Balding Eagles, uh, best name, best logo. I'm saying it right now. This is sick. This team's dope. I don't know much about them, but they're my favorites. Um, Hack on the tank, Sami on the paladin, Nomicus on the uh, the mage, Ishin on rogue, Abram on priest, and Laz Lazar on a druid. I mean, will the dad gamers prove that they're alpha? I mean, that that's that's the question today. <laughs> What's the average age in this group, Cop Brady? <laughs> oh, it's got to be like 47 and a half, bro. <laughs> For sure, dude. <laughs> the Balding Eagles, man. Look dude, this is this is this is a rec league basketball team that signed up for Hardcore All Stars together, bro. Like they're just a bunch of dad gamers that just they just did it. They're ready to go. <laughs> the Iron Forge Drunk Tank. Oh, uh, did we skip one? one? Yeah, we'll go. Oh, we'll... we're on Hellfire Club. It's all good. Hellfire Club. I mean, as this team's super interesting. So we got Wispo on Priest, Skeppo on Warlock, Swan on Mage. And NX, NXS on Hunter, Lion on Druid, and Izzy on Paladin. This team has no true tank. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, this team intends on Warlock tanking their way through this event. This is the truest spell cleave we're going to see. I'm very, very interested to see how that plays out for them. Everybody in chat saying, Wizbo goaded, Wizbo, Wizbo. Might be a fan right. favorite right there. Wizbo, 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 let's go. The Iron Forge Drunk Tank. This is a team where whose names uh, let blend in with their team name. We have Brewer, Boulevardier, No Marita, No Kila, Margarita, and Kill Kenny. Uh, so a lot of alcohol in the names. Will the alcohol prove to be this cheat code in Hardcore All Stars, or will it better to be attack it sober? I guess we'll have to see how that plays out for Drunk Tank uh, as they continue through the event. Definitely a wild card squad when your name's full of alcohol references. Make sure you catch the first circuit because you might not see the Drunk Tank around after that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got Team No CC. Uh, so on the tank, Sheesh. we have Tactics. Sheesh. Tactics on Warrior, Bobka on Rogue, Cargo's on Hunter, myself on the Mage, Grace for Days on the Druid, and Dustbone on the Shaman. This is your typical horde melee cleave, zug, zug, zug. You got the mage as a sub in case something goes crazy. Um, gotta be a front runner in the event just from name power, right? Bob Kakarko's Grace Tactics, that's pretty much uh, an all-star squad right there. Not gonna even include myself in that. Um, but yeah, the real question for this team, unbiased take, is is melee cleave gonna be able to keep up? Mm -hmm. If yes, then then absolutely they're a front runner, but they don't have the safety net that the Alliance teams have with the Paladin. So they're just gonna have to zug within their means to get to the end here, I think. I'm just saying this team is gonna cause a lot of work for only because he's gonna dig through y'all's vods, okay? He don't trust <laughs> any of you. Right. Don't I, we got Bulb on our team, man. I, I want only to VOD review this guy, no. I just hope that we stay alive through those circuits, man. Can we just not throw? Just don't die. The Verdeer Enjoyers. I really like this team. This team right here is my, if you had to give me one sleeper pick, this is my sleeper team. I think some people might be sleeping on these guys, but they shouldn't be. 
We have Rizoku on the healer. That's a level 60 hardcore Road to Rag legend right there. Unchained on the hunter. That's back to back Makara champion. Known for on the mage, Kitty Cat on the road, Pigsy on the druid, and Maddie on the paladin. They have druid paladin. I really like that for survivability. They have druid paladin priest. I mean, this team is survivability all the way. And I do think that uh, just getting to the end can be super valuable in, in an event like this because there might only be five teams there. Yo, I recognize all these names. I'm pretty sure all these guys are like 60 hardcore elite players as well. Road to rag players. Yeah, this team's nuts. All right, let me take a breath in here. Ready? All right, all right, everyone relax. Mischievous rural squirrels and also there was no shark. Welcome to the competition, guys. Uh, offbeat on tank, no hit Jerome on, <laughs> on priest. Bhutan on um, the Warlock, Wandering Golf on the Mage, and Tanzanian on the uh, Shaman. Um, give me one second. There we go. On the Shaman. So this team, no hit Jerome's uh, triumphant return back to uh, back to it's back to World of Warcraft uh, vanilla hardcore. So we welcome him back with open arms, and we're glad to see that this team is uh, gonna make a run at it. And uh, good luck to the commentary team that has to say the word mischievous, rural squirrels, and also there was no shark every single time they pop up. <laughs> Just surprised Jerome didn't have his own team, his own five-man multi-box team. Yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, Tarmusi and the Kitty Cat Trolls. Don't really understand this team name. Oh, never mind. I do see Tarmu in here, so that's the uh, the, the naming uh, right there. This team I do like a lot. Flip Mode on Tank, Link it on Mage, Gulf on Hunter, Kairosheen on Rogue, Tarmo on Druid, uh, Pius on the Shaman. Uh, Flip Mode, Link it, names I'm really familiar with. These are these are slow and steady gamers. They do noob core and a lot of other things. A lot of experience here. A uh, team that I definitely think could make it to the end, especially even with uh, the, I guess, uh, protection nerf of not being alliance uh, but they do have tailoring and leatherworking so we'll see how that goes yeah yeah that's the second drew we've seen with leatherworking I, I think these guys are just valuing wolf's head helm it'll be fun to see hopefully they make it to circuit three to uh craft that helmet all right zug life this team is a team of legends here Ooh, so I recognize you got all rose those. goku on hunter nom nom hc on rogue that's one guy has gotta be able to make it right guy's got like 90 hc 60s nova hc on the mage chadley hank on the warlock cheesy goodness on the druid and stone cold on the shaman here's one thing i will say about this team i have no idea how fast they're going to go on anything but i guarantee you this <sighs> team makes it to the end these are my boys, man. These are all the homies. They're all in G. Oh, let's go. I'm rooting for Zug Life, and they're playing Horde. Ooh, they drag Nom Nom over on the Horde side. As long as Nom yep. doesn't die of boredom during the leveling process, <laughs> should be a dependable member. The 22-time level 60 legend. All right, we got Team Gamma here. We're back on the Alliance side. Most of the teams are Alliance. Gotta find these guys in my notes. There we go. Uh, Kakonga on the tank. Uh, Aka on the um, Hunter, Jonah on Warlock, Suri HC on the Mage, Thursday on the Druid, and Pew Pew on the Hunter. I don't know if Suri is the same Suri from Road to Rag. And this is what I will say. If this Suri is the same Suri from Road to Rag, this team's in good hands because that's a very, very, very good player. If not, I'm sure the other Suri is also very good. So I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry if you're not that person. I still believe in you. But if you are that person, I believe in you even more. That's my take on this team. That's all I came up with. I really like they, they're double tailoring, leatherworking, two Ingies, and an Alchemist. So it's like they got access to two target dummies, and then they win all the other professions. Look out for Gamma and some of the profession power that they bring to these runs. The Westfall Wallabies, a wonderful group here. Um, we got Grief on the Warrior, Sunships on the Priest, Blifferton on Mage, Wash on Hunter, Ellie, HC on Warlock and Wings on Druid. Uh, another Alliance team uh, with no Paladin. So I'm interested to see what Alliance no Paladin looks like from the Westfall Wallabies. Um, uh, I think that's going to be an interesting show for them. Uh, but, uh, you know, they get a lot more damage, I think, uh, with, with their current comp as opposed to the Paladin. So will that pan out for them? I think one of the biggest upsides of Alliance is Paladin. So I'm interested to see what happened to Alliance teams that didn't go Paladin. The missing diplomats. This team I could talk for 85 years about. You got aid on tank, lock on 
Priest, a Big Brother on Mage, uh, Kai on Rogue, Leron on Hunter, and Edgy's on Paladin. You have a lot of experience on this team. The name is kind of a touch on some drama that happened in the community uh, with this team. So I think this team is not shy to talk about that. <laughs> uh, I'm excited to see what these HC Elite gamers bring to the club. Uh, will they be crowd favorites? Who knows? Uh, but I think they're going to be able to uh, to make it happen. Yeah, and get pretty far. Man. They messed up playing Alliance, bro. They should have had all their Hearthstones and Dust Wallow just sat there, dude. <laughs> they messed up. This team's goaded, man. HC Elite. team most likely to cheat is what Chad is saying. So we'll see <laughs> if that is the case or not. I think all these guys actively raid like two or three times a week at level 60 mm -hmm. in hardcore right now. So look out for these guys. Nar Gehennis on tank is business Lunket. I'm not saying the end of that. Lunk it, lunk it, uh, whatever, it's fine. Uh, on healer, passion, <laughs> oh, I was trying to feel like saying it. Passion on the mage, milling on the roan, and swain pala on the paladin. Uh, no sub. Is Nargahennis going to be able to make it with no sub? We will see. We got some, another one of those teams that's rocking Taylor skinning. I'm interested to see what happens with those teams as well, for sure. The Goldshire Gangsters, you have Bear, Long Shot, Easy Mage, Peaked, J Side, and Din. Um, these again repping paladin on repping paladin repping alliance got a sick logo i said look really cool logo mm. uh, that they got going on down there as Let, well so what's I, the what's the tank doing going blacksmithing well what are we doing here with bs oh maybe he's just he's gonna piss himself out maybe he doesn't want to fish never wants to fish maybe that's that's fun to look at yeah yeah, yeah. i think he's the only tank that's going uh, bs so far that signed up yeah the gg and you got the Slum Lord, Zolon Tank, Talix on Priest, Numps, Meta Goblin, right? Meta Goblin here on the Hunter snuck into this Yo. team. Javet on the Druid and Sheepa on the Shaman. So this team got real interesting with the addition of Meta Goblin, Meta Goblin, and Absolute Giga Chad in the in the in the World of Warcraft space as a whole. So hopefully he enjoys his time here and goes pretty far in this competition. So uh, any Meta Goblin supporters in the chat, I think you will be rooting for the Slum Lords as time goes by here. We're going to be looking at the uh, distribution of Horde versus Alliance as well. We're going to go over some classes as well. And then we'll do a little, little deep dive into some of the professions here. So 24 confirmed teams. I'm going to call the segment Chef's Statistics, where we can kind of go in depth on things about the uh, you know all-star circuit here. And of the 24, we have 14 being the Blue Boys Alliance, and we have 10 being Horde. So it's about a 58% ratio of Alliance teams to where it's about 42% of Horde. So it's pretty pretty even. And for the most part, you're going to see that being even because you have specific classes to those factions. So well, right, right off the bat, is, is this expected? Um, the two most popular classes are Hunter so, and Mage? Yes, just because of how well they control the entire dungeon, pulling the flow of things. Obviously, a mage, mages can solo like any dungeon. Like they're just broke. Like if you're not rolling a mage, you're honestly troll. Same thing with the hunter. So, of the twenty-four teams confirmed, there are twenty. Ah, mages I've been expecting. Right, and, and we can't class stack, so you can only have one of each class yeah, on these teams, right? So you can only have one. So you definitely need to have the. They're just broke. They're at S tier on my hardcore, you know, leveling classes. They're absolutely broken. Just underneath it, you're going to have arguably the best tank in hardcore as well. You have 19 warriors signed up. And, I mean, they do damage. They can wear a two-hander. They can cleave off targets. They can AWE taunt thing, hold threat. Easy peasy. Got to have a warrior in there. And then coming just underneath the warrior, we're actually going to have priest which this is an interesting one because you can you know a lot of people think priests are you know you have to have them fear wards amazing if you're on the alliance side but they can also spec into shadow they can do a little hybrid build and have a lot of nice utility for the party as well throw out some dots they have a little bit of crowd control you're going to be a little scared using that uh psychic stream in dungeons but it's definitely nice to have there as well just underneath priests, another hybrid class, which I'm happy to see a lot of representation. We have 16 druids. Two of every three teams have a druid, which is awesome because druids are the best class in the game. I don't need to tell you that, Grace. You don't yeah, know yeah. that. But uh, this is so. This is um. I've heard this a couple times. Like a druid, if you have it on your team, it's not gonna be a winning formula. It's not the winning comp. You're not gonna win if you have a druid. 
I but don't you know, might man. survive and you might just pick up the pieces they're they're a great utility class uh that's that's what i've heard from a couple people some of these top teams i don't think they had a druid on their team um, that's just it's copium i mean end it, game <laughs> if if rogues didn't have their death mantle or whatever it's called druids do the most damage bro charts don't lie okay <laughs> i didn't get healed i didn't press lip whatever i didn't press cower because i'm doing too much damage bro. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so they yeah do, do everything i see i see these classes that got drafted and at least whenever i was joining my team i told everyone i was like guys i have to play druid it's my favorite class it's the class i know the best mm -hmm. um and even well let's make it work you know what i mean let's not necessarily go for the best comp uh let's put our team together and we all come and play our main class so we'll we'll see how well the druids perform um whether they're the main tank the off tank i'm i'm obviously biased as well but i'm excited to see where druids slot into these groups for sure and then coming right underneath the hybrids, we have just two straight up DPS classes. You have Warlock and Rogue, both rocking 12 a piece there. So one in every two teams has a Warlock or a Rogue in it. And you'd expect that they definitely have consistent DPS. They have really nice crowd control, both of them. They can pretty much handle multiple mobs on themselves at one time. And yes, I do notice the chat it's supposed to be 10 shamans there. It's actually getting live updated as I'm reading that. Or I think nine, it was nine, sorry. right? There was one guy yeah, yeah, that so there's the last two dps and then you have the faction specific classes which you were for sure going to see a high percentage of these because that's a lot of people's talking points of basing a team around them so you have 12 paladins of the 14 alliance teams coming in at 85 percent of alliance teams have a paladin and then you have nine out of 10 horde teams so 90 percent have a shaman i'm the one team i'm thinking i messed up man my team doesn't have a shaman so <laughs> Did I go on the wrong faction and I didn't pick the OP class of Shaman, apparently? We will uh, we'll have to find out, but both those Paladin and Shaman bring super, super interesting kits to the team. Like your team, Graze No CC, you guys are just going for the melee cleave, Zug Zug. Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm curious what other people's takes are on this too, Showback. I don't know if you have any thoughts on it or Lesimos. Um, I hear the Paladin is OP, it's why you have to go ally, but until level 60 content until raid content paladins kind of suck and five mans and healing it's all just single target like are, are paladins as op in this world tour in the circuit series uh as they are in game you know is it copium or i mean i know that they're defensive and yeah they pick up the pieces but are they going to be the fastest and uh, the highest impact in these dungeons i don't know man i'm on horde so i, I hope not. Shobek, Shobek switched from horde to alliance so please yeah Tell us show back why yeah yeah so i mean our reasoning for going paladin was just like we were having aggro issues and i feel like with paladin you just you get salvation and you can kind of control and direct the damage and i think that's like the overall like reason why you want the paladin because when we met the shaman we were having issues in rfc with just managing aggro and like we had to kite and then well what happens if you have wind fury up what'll if I have Wind Fury and I'm kind of nearing aggro and then I get a crit proc and then my auto attacks crit and the next thing I know I swing aggro and I get a double haste parry death, mm. boom, I just die off of like half a global and some RNG. So we were like, well, let's kind of better better be able to direct the aggro and where that damage is going. So salvation, boom, I don't, no one really has to worry about threat anymore. And then we can just kind of have the damage on who we want. I like it. I, that's the class breakdown, I believe. Yeah, that was yeah. great, man. Hell yeah. Uh, if you want to go a little bit further in, so chat can stop talking about what I'm wearing. Oh. <laughs> we're going to start We're gonna start breaking down the professions, boys. This is a chef coat, okay? We'll get there, chat. You just got to give me a little bit of time. But speaking of professions here, let's see if we can do this and not drop everything. There are so many professions in World of Warcraft, you guys. And... It's impossible to juggle all of them, okay? That's why only with Smart and capped it at two professions per player, so you're not being super sweaty trying to grow and grab every single profession, trying to juggle it like I'm juggling this in real life, okay? <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and break down the professions. So, so we can't profession yeah. swap in between circuits. Whatever you choose you at the beginning, you're stuck with so, it. You're not allowed to trade with your teammates either, so you definitely want to have a specific class profession so you know like you said druids might want to go leather working stuff like that you guys we're going to start off with what everybody should have in hardcore okay you know what this is <laughs> that's a cat's life, but it's also a fish okay 
You need to have cooking and fishing if you're gonna play hardcore. I just do it on a bunch of plastic. It'll stop in a second, I promise. And I'm taking off the chef jacket because it's so hot, you guys. If I don't see 100% of people having fishing and cooking, you're troll. They're too good, okay? G give me some of the advantages of fishing and cooking real fast. So you can literally get a full rack of gear right now. You could be level 12. You were level 12. You I don't can, know why you You were can level get 12. gear from cooking? What? Oh, I thought you were saying fishing. Bro. Oh, yeah, of course. No, I just. <laughs> so cooking. You definitely want to get, have cooking. I don't want to spill all the secrets, but there's a couple of food in the game that, you know, give mana and health at the same time. So you don't have to have a food stack and a water stack. You could just combine them into one food. And you could have stuff like passive spirit, which will double up with trolls passive. So they have a bunch of innate health regen while in combat. And then just for tanks, having stamina is pretty nice. So you're not getting absolutely obliterated. And fishing, so, fishing we can get gear though. Yes, fishing, you can, I mean, you already know this, if you, guys, if you're not fishing, you're literally trolling, okay? You can get a full rack of pretty much biz gear on every single class. You can get weapons, you can get tailoring mats, you can get skin to make, you know, your engineering goggles, whatever you need. And right now, you can get level 23, 22 gear in this first circuit and have a full rack of greens, mm. great. I'm pretty sure Cargo's is literally done. He's playing his second character. Right? Yeah, He's, yeah. Oh, bobka has been fishing up level 25 daggers, dude. It's been crazy. You can't even use them in the circuit. Yeah, so I, my first piece of gear that I fished up, I'm a druid player, you guys. I fished up a level 23 two-handed sword with seven strength and six stamina on it. Wow. It was a nice 50 silver vendor, though. I'm not going to lie because I can't trade it. Warriors but I was and champions. So we're going to go ahead and go over just the percentages of players like you see on the screen here. We have a one Giga Chad player, if you didn't see it, Helix, who's rocking, enchanting. He's gonna be enchanting his gear, maybe making a wand for himself, I'm assuming he's a priest. That guy's a Chad, dude. I didn't think we'd see a single engineer or enchanter. We got an enchanter, what a beast. That's gonna be fun to look at. Normally, like you see duels in hardcore since they have access to blacksmithing and making rods for later. Mm -hmm. uh, but this guy can't profession swap, so... Um... I guess he he's gonna get big value in the first circuit and then out level yeah. it. I don't know. He's gonna have like eight spell damage from wizard oil and a wand. Uh, yeah, they're, they're gonna struggle maybe to find those rods after the first copper rod. But you know, is it the isn't there trading at sixty? Trading at sixty, yeah. Oh but, my! Maybe so. he's giga hoping to get to sixty and then enchant his whole team for the final oh. circuit. They're it's... playing the long game, dude. What are some insane? Oh my gosh, that's gonna take right, actually. Trade them all. You, that you hit sixty like during the final circuit. Yeah. I think yep. he's gonna here on the fly. You're starting a so. quarter level from sixty on the final. <laughs> Yo, uh, what what team has enchanting? Man, I hope that team makes it to circuit it was five. The final team Lesmos went over. That, that has to be the only reason they win enchant. They level yeah. sixty and enchant their gear. So more popular one. We're, we're gonna <laughs> probably a more popular one than enchanting. We have alchemy as well as herbalism, you guys. We have a total of 45 players, so that is one in three rocking herbalism and alchemy here. Getting the Skittles, as Winky likes to call them, just always having a full rack of buffs rolling. There is some strategy being talked about with the one team that has all alchemists, but I won't leak it if they don't want me to. <laughs> this <laughs> <I'm trying> to... <laughs> a couple things here, but uh, I'm also still wearing too many layers guys so i'm gonna take off my leather coat here that i might make from leather working and you know we have seven leather workers that's more than i thought that's five percent of players are leather working you guys and to get the leather you gotta have a skinning knife so mm -hmm. you would assume they'd go skinning as well what do we got we got 13 skinners because some tailors want to go skinning as I well i wonder if all those leather workers are druids for wolf's at home i think i saw one or two rogues that maybe had leather working there, there were a couple of rogues true that were uh oh you get nifty well. stopwatch as well that's right uh oh sorry if you go alchemy all right, not mm -hmm. necessarily. so the most popular one we're gonna see you guys you know what this is it's not really iron ore Joy. but we're gonna pretend it's iron ore you know what this is this is a shadow gem a lot of people going engineering, blacksmithing, not a blacksmithing, but mining. We have a total of 71 engineer players. That is 52.2% nice. of people. 
Yo, can you show that rock again, Gordon? I feel like all of us have seen that rock in like third grade, fourth grade. Oh, yeah. Didn't we you all go, get you one go of those? Out, You go out to the creek, you throw some big rocks oh, like, against another rock, and there you go. Your science teacher brings one of those rocks to class. You know, this had a name to it, but I, I'm not going to tell you what it was because I'm probably going to lie. And uh, to get those, though, you have to have mining. So we have 75 miners. That is actually the most out of anyone in any profession. We have 75 because we have a couple blacksmiths as well, so they want to have mining to be able to build their swords their armors whatever you want to say there and then i saved the last but not least we got tailoring you can make yourself a nice fitted outfit mm. tailored to your character you guys mm. all right What's the stats on that bad boy <laughs> this, yeah. this, this is like a five well i'm not gonna say intellect because it definitely doesn't make me smarter five spirit okay Five you get plus five morale with this yes on. yes sir so we have a total of 11 tailors that's actually more than i thought that's eight percent of players going tailoring here so god it feels so good to take those jackets off you guys i was standing way too long that's why you guys thought i was wearing a strange jacket parlor said you know, <laughs> i just was wearing five layers okay gordon so. ramsey with the uh the class profession <laughs> overview could we get some easy claps Clap in the chat for gordon man oh i yep. can't wait to sit down the best comment in chat while Gordon was talking was, this guy's definitely a retired science teacher. <laughs> <laughs> My dad is a chemist, so that's, that's where I get it from. That's too funny, oh, man. over the chair. Oh, you know what? I almost forgot. Uh, taking a live look. Everybody's leveling right now for Circuit 1. Let's take a look in game and see what's happening in the world. We're coming in live from the Barons oh, on Hydraxium Waterlords EU. We're able to level characters and participate on both blood sale buccaneers and hydraxian water lords so this is going on in na and eu like i said we have those 24 teams might see 35 40 teams um, by the end of the circuit uh but yeah it's it's getting it's get it's the evening time for the barons right now uh and it's moving it's bustling. you think that one guy's using the mailbox we gotta kill oh him. yeah he's abusing <laughs> he's sure. abusing Caught bro a live red hand <laughs> live red hand he turned off the ad real quick this guy's about the keyboard turn. Look at the look at the camera. And just <laughs> oh, he's away. running. He's like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> they caught me, bro. I gotta log out. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Oh, that's good stuff. That that's a good overview. Um, I think we have a few more clips we could look at as we're getting started. Um, didn't we? Oh, you know what we were gonna do, Lesmo? Should we do the tier list for the teams? Yeah, no, I think we should. I think we just broke everything down. Let's get mm -hmm. into the tier list. I want to hear Chobek's take. Chobek just got introduced to a lot of these teams, so I'm interested to see, uh, you know, the breakdown of uh, of how this tier list is going to look. Um, so yeah. I, I had my first experience with tier list maker yesterday. Do you know you have to link it to Twitter to make a tier list? It's ridiculous. I had to make a burner Twitter. I don't want the tier list maker to have access to my Twitter. But we made a tier list. So we have a tier list of all the teams that we got introduced to earlier. Um, as soon as you get in on the full screen, we can kind of break down the... Uh... Oh, no, this is the this is the, the one that we're going to go through. The perfect. Uh, so we have a couple tiers here. Top tier is going to be God tier. Uh, these are the teams that, you know, kind of stand out above and beyond everyone else just from kind of comp names that are on the team right away. Just kind of like the preseason favorites. Then you have your front runners, people that, you know, going to probably make it to the end. Um, you know, could definitely make a, a deep run in this. Contenders, teams that are definitely going to be in the mix throughout. I'd say sleeper picks, teams that, you know, some people might not recognize off the bat or some of these professions going to look weird. This comp looks kind of weird. They could be a sleeper. And then just absolute wild cards where anything could happen with them. So, mm. uh, you know, we, we tried to stay away from the you're actually really bad tier. We didn't, we didn't, no one's in a bad tier so far. We haven't <laughs> seen anybody play the game yet. Uh, so, you know, maybe a couple weeks in, once we see some plays, we'll start calling people bad. But till then, um, you know, we're all just glad to be having these teams yeah. in here. That's sick, man. Hey, do you guys, can we link this uh, PDF maybe in our chat? Or you, you should be able to see on stream. Yeah, we actually, can actually show link the, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, let's go from top to bottom Join. again. Our, our first team on the list, we've got Gorilla Milk. Uh, you recognize some of these names. I've seen Table Slam. What comes, the team name that comes to mind is Table Slam. He's been making only cave dungeon videos recently. Uh, he is going leatherworking for the Wolf's Head Helm. They've got two engineers, two alchemists, 
Uh, the hybrid Pally and Priest are both alchemy, assuming they just drink mana pots on cooldown. Uh, that was my strat with Druid, just drinking mana pots on cooldown. Where do you, where do you guys think this tier comp class um, fits? They've got the Holy Nova, Hellfire, Arcane Explosion build with the Spellcasters, and Table Slam playing hybrid, and the Paladin playing hybrid. Honestly, the, the Clothies may run the show here. Uh, wait, is there high potential for this comp? Or what's everybody in chat think? Where would you rate these guys uh, from top to bottom? And then we'll give our take on it. Yeah, I mean, I see no true warrior. So that's going to be interesting to see how this goes. Um, I'm interested to see what chat thinks. I'm interested to see what Shobek thinks. I'm interested to see what... Yeah, no hunters in this group as well. That's another thing. Is it, This um, is a pally tank comp? Um, yeah, it's not the traditional dungeon race either, guys. Like, uh, the circuits... Like, we're going to start at 22 and a half in this first one. And it's Dead Mines, Wailing Caverns, SFK, BFD. So the first two dungeons... We are going to steamroll, man. Like, there's going to be little damage going out. Uh, not having a dedicated tank might be the play here. Uh, and you can do a little bit bigger pulls. Everybody's kind of got aggro on everything, just putting out as much damage as you can. Now, if on some of these circuits where the content is two or three levels higher than you, uh, maybe a comp like this does struggle without a traditional tank. But it's, it's hard to say, man. Like I said, I think that triple... Like the, the triple AoE threat combo. And Pally with uh, Consecrate. I, I know that Consecrate's kind of a meme. Costs too much mana. But it, it seems like this group is going to cleave things down. It's interesting that you say that the, the Druid isn't a dedicated tank. Like, why can't a Druid be a dedicated tank? Sure. Because our logic was, in raids, it's kind of more so the Warrior should be the dedicated tank. But I think a Druid is going to have no problem. And they give buffs to the raid. Now, this comp's a little bit awkward because they're casters. But I mean, like Mark of the Wild and everything like that, that's that's great across the board. Because mm. I think it's all about buffing and going into the dungeon fully buffed out, right? Your scrolls, you have um, your alchemy if you have that. Then you also have the druid buff. You're going to have the priest buff. You're going to have the pally buff. You're going to have the warlock with the imp uh, blood pack. So these guys are going to be walking in with like one like 1k plus health into dead mines. Mm. And then the druid is going to be so stacked out of his mind I think he'll totally be able to clear and hold aggro. Because that's our, that was like our logic. Like, let's run a druid, get the buff, and just have him tank. Because I think a druid can control a five man. Um, but when you get more yeah. to the 10 to 40, druid kind of, I think, falls behind. Yeah, one, uh, somebody in chat said this group is going to lack kicks. And so maybe the comes a little bit higher, you do bigger pulls, and the mobs don't go down as fast. Uh, I'm trying to think of some of these pulls where we do have healers and casters. That could be problematic. I, wh wh where would you guys put these guys? I'd, I'd say these guys are the top of contenders. Oh, top of okay. contenders, bottom end of front runners. So I'd say right now contenders, and then as the, as the group forms, as it forms, we can start to see where everything else falls. It's I, hard in the beginning to, I, to put it. The team, only so person I recognize is Table Slam, and I'm biased because I, I love the YouTube content he's been putting out, and I, I think these guys have potential to be unique, mm -hmm. especially in the comp. Mm -hmm. But with lacking kicks, I mean, can't you just sheep the kick? Like, if, if there's sheep anything it, being casted, you can literally yeah, just but sheep and break you're it. You're AoEing everything. Yeah, I know, but all you need oh, to yeah, do, all sheep, you need to do yeah. is sheep, and it breaks it. So, like, yeah. they're, he pretty much has a spam sheep, and they're just gonna break it immediately with all the rotten AoE. I like it, yeah, man. Yeah, but you're just, you're just gonna kill it. I think you're just gonna AoE it. I like I it. Think, I think they have so much AoE that they have a lot of potential. I think people sleep on Holy Nova as well, just as a spell. Hey, I gotta um, say, this is oh. one of the best uh, logos. Team logos, team names, Gorilla Milk. Look out for these guys. For sure. Here we go. See you next circus. Ooh, baby. I'll be honest, guys. The only... I, I don't want to win. The only thing I want to do is beat this team right here. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I, I agree with you, bro. I know I and have played with all these guys. Ompy was the raid lead in Road to Rag. Parla, Apes Player, Goaded, First Rag Kill, Keksek, Legend, Ellen Degenerate, Calamity... Uh, don't get me started. She DI'd me. Peter's in. Like, th this is a. This has to be a fan favorite. Like, uh, with the tier maker being god tier, how do you not put these guys in the first tier? They're all yeah, gamers. Right? They're all yeah. alchemy, which we haven't seen another team do. I know that they're all sweaty, grimy, just uh, greasy. <laughs> Strats are coming out of this team. You know, oh, keeping well, some Discord call. Uh, they've been fishing for the last 48 hours straight. Oh my gosh. It, it, speaking of fishing, hang on. Do you guys want to check this out? Because we got into a fishing feud the other night with this team right here. 
uh, Ompi and Calamity. I got a bone to pick with you guys, but if you take a look. Spot. We got a live look over from Stone Talon Mountains um, <laughs> on Hydraxian Water Lords. Let's see the usual suspect. Who do you think it is? Oh, it's actually Swan from Hellfire Club. I thought that was Ompy. Wait, I love the fact that you know what team they're on from the name already. Yeah. Oh, this is sick. It's happening. Let's go. Hellfire Club out here in the fishing spot today. Hellfire Club. Dude, that might put Hellfire Club in A tier just because... Look at these swimming books. I Before I started, I saw a second member of Hellfire Club here. Let me let me take a lap around and see if anyone else is here. Uh, there's also a rare spawn that everybody... Oh my goodness, it's another member of... Join me. Oh, it's just victory, no death. It's just a... It's a rando. <laughs> it's a level 28. <laughs> we got a tournament, man. We got green gear to fish up. But also in this fishing <laughs> spot, guys, there's a rare spawn that drops a 5 agi cloak. So this is a hot spot, man. One of the best fishing spots uh, in this circuit one. It's getting tier 2 fishing crates. Uh, I love that we see one of the competitors out here already. This is on EU2. This is across two regions. Um, there's people fishing for bis green gear already. Uh, we'll check in on this spot again. Let's go back to the tier list. Yeah, I think you picked a good uh, team to move to the fishing spot on, because I think we kind of all know where this team's going on the tier list. I think chat spammed it pretty easily in the beginning. Uh, if, if this team's not god tier in the preseason, I don't know who is. Yeah, you're going to see some absolute crazy plays, especially like they're going to, they probably are having all the numbers crunched with what mobs exactly they need to pull and what mobs exactly they can skip to get to that threshold for the fastest clear. And I think that's why they're really utilizing the um, alchemies. So they, they just know exactly like when to use it and to minimize the amount of time that they're in those dungeons. So what, why are they all alchemy? You, you do have the invispot strat. Don't know if it's gonna be utilized. Everybody can get nifty stopwatch in hardcore uh, by circuit three. They're all gonna have nifty yeah. stopwatch trinkets. It's on a 30 minute cooldown. You can use those once a dungeon, maybe for some serious skips. Oh my gosh, I'm seeing it now. The stars yeah. are aligning. Holy also, crap. too, also too. I mean, these guys are sweaty, right? So they're they're pin, they're pinch picking every single point travel time, every travel time between dungeons. You're probably getting a speed pod every every route. You're getting a speed pod. That's going to save you another thirty seconds. Thirty seconds across the entirety of the circuits. You're saving like five minutes, ten minutes in travel time. Bro, imagine, just by popping a, imagine speed pot. a full team with swiftness pot, nifty. They do their trash requirement ah, in certain parts. I've been they pick one spot them. in each dungeon um, that they skip the most at, and they pop yeah. both swiftness pot and nifty, and then they hit an evade spot. Bro, I'm I get already yeah. annoyed so that I lost to this someone's team. Someone's gonna pop something while they're invis that they shouldn't. And <laughs> I don't even think they're going invis, bro. I oh, that would be sweet though. Hopefully, they do some invis bots plays. Uh, they may not all have access to Swiftness Potion, uh, but, but, so Swiftness Potion, yeah, it, it, sorry, it's a world drop that you can get. These guys have to be god tier. Look at, Ompi just sent me this live five minutes ago. <laughs> Ellen Degenerate, uh, two people from CNX Club and two people from Hellfire Club fighting over <laughs> fishing nodes in Hellfire already, so. I can't wait. We need to do a gear overview the day before the first circuit and see yeah. what everybody's fished up. Uh, this is really yeah. exciting to see. Mm -hmm. And there's more people on top, dude. There's two people on the top of that photo. Really? Holy yeah, cow. Yeah, five people fishing. So I think All it's, right. it's safe Let's to throw say these guys in God too. tier. We don't want to spend. If you, <laughs> I noticed in tier list, sometimes you spend 30 minutes on the first people, mm. and then by the end, you like you're just throwing people up. True, <laughs> so true, true. Let's, uh, let's keep it consistent. True, 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 true. Okay, next we're looking at Nemesis. Um. Anything pop out to you guys here? We got a horde team, Zug Zug. We got tailoring, leatherworking. Uh, Dewas. I wonder what their main is. I wonder what like what their main comp is. I think they're gonna be running what double healer, and then if one healer dies, they'll sub out the priest. So it'll be yeah. lock hunter, uh, rogue warrior. Probably start with the shaman to get or the priest, and then wait for shaman's wind fury yeah. to swap them in like shaman that. will join in like circuit three and on probably well circuit two he gets wind fury uh for the rogue warrior um i think circuit two is level 32 or 33 cap so they definitely have wind fury totem starting in circuit ah, two. Ooh, that's so I've fun bro that they yeah. are going to alternate between circuits right there yeah yeah I, I like the priest i think um in a perfect world uh i think priest is probably the best class to play uh as as a sub for horde specifically 
Um, but 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 no mage on this roster, and I do think uh, there are some um, there are there's some merit to having the mage in the pocket. I think if you are not gonna bring a mage, you're gonna be a horde team with running that kind of like shaman uh, for for shaman Drew melee and stuff. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I reckon the only name I recognize is Dwaths. Uh, this guy has a winning attitude. He's got W's in his blood. He won the first two RFC Wayland Cavern circuits. Um, we came up short in dead mines, but yeah, looking out for this guy as the team leader. He knows how to win. Uh, what, what are you guys thinking? Horde? Do we have some Horde bias here? What do you guys think about the logo, Project Nemesis? Guys in chat, where would you put this team on the radar? I like whenever teams aren't full NG out. Like, I feel like whenever they go tailoring, leatherworking, they are a little bit five head and like thinking ahead. And mm -hmm. where would you put Definitely these guys? contenders for sure. Put them in contenders. contenders. I like it. That's a that's a strong melee cleave for Horde. Yep. Team Nemesis. We'll see. We'll see how this tier list pans out by the end of it. Our next team is Sudbury Blueberry Bulldogs. Got the full NG Alk comp. No crafting. Um, another group with a mage. Somebody was hating on the fact that there was no mage in the other group. I, I like that they have hybrid, hybrid. They Oh, hang on. They consider the Warlock a hybrid? Uh, they might with, like, be. Like Voidwalker tank? They might be, yeah. This could be a Warlock tank eventually down the line. Dude. I mean, the big thing I see about this team is Alliance, no Paladin. And I get scared about it. Nah, man. It's Giga Chad. They have the confidence. It's an angle that you, you just don't even see, and they see it. <laughs> <laughs> now, we don't need Wind Fury. Nah, is this, is the we, we go for the, it's the sleeper pig. These guys go for their, their RP. They go for the models. They, they play what they love to play, and this is kind of a similar comp to I was going to run, um, other than obviously they're doing a priest instead of a paladin. But, I mean, you really can't go wrong with a hunter, mage, warlock, and a druid. Like They're going to have so much control over all the mobs. The Law can also tank, the Warrior can tank. They have three or four guys going NG. They're gonna be dropping target dummies left and right. Mm. I mean, like, they're gonna be able to like control everything. Mm. And nothing is really gonna be causing any sort of issue because they have so much to blow through, right? Let the Hunter pet go in, let it die, don't even heal it. Let the Lock pet tank, let it die, don't even heal it. All right, right. cool, now the Warrior tank, or now the Druid tanks. Boss is at 50, 40% already, easy, boom, they clean yeah. up. Well, we did we did the deadmines race the other day, and we had a warrior with a level thirteen um, bear, and he was able to tank the level eighteen goblins. And so these pet tanks are severely underrated. Um, they do take away like rage generation from the warrior and mm -hmm. the cat, you know, the bear if the druids go bear, which I don't like. But I think the fact that these guys are going double pet class, they might be kind of ambitious with some of these pulls. Um, they might want the pets to get initial threat and they just nuke it all down, maybe. I'm curious to see what the comp is here. But yeah, no Paladins. If they did do a Spell Cleave, because they, they kind of have the Spell Cleave comp, um, they don't have Pallies to, as like a oh shit button, but they do have NG yeah. with tons of target dummies. So. Yeah. I'm is still going to... Go ahead. I was going to say, is Shadow Priest actually viable? Like, would that be a thing? Like, would they actually uh, sub out the Warrior and do Druid Tank, mm -hmm. Lock, Mage, uh, Hunter, and then Priest? Yeah. They might have to. I Maybe. think Shadow Priests are actually super sleepy maybe so bro and like we did sunken temple one time with like a 48 dude we we tanked the last boss 55 i did it with a 5200 5100 48 lock and their pets tanked and they survived so you're taking the pets are taking crushing blows from a sunken temple level 55 boss uh don't sleep on the pet tanks man curious to see how this team does where do we put these guys it's, it's, I'm, still, we... I'm still going sleeper here for me but sleeper yes. I'm still going sleeper. Yeah. I, I think they are a good sleeper pick, actually. You don't yeah. know if they're going to... Yeah, it could be a sleeper. I like that. I like that a lot. I mean, dude, if they're Alliance and they don't have a Paladin, sleeper pick, bro. Watch <laughs> yeah, out for these boys. That, that's how I feel, too. If you're Alliance, no Paladin, you have to be a sleeper. You have to have some strat that we have no idea what's going on that you know that we don't know. So you're a sleeper pick for me. Yeah. I like it. WCYD. And some Horde love. What can you do? Is this Grizzly? I need someone to tell me if this is Grizzly. I know Ompy's in chat. If this is Grizzly, they're going into front runners. If they're not Grizzly, I have no idea where to put them. Do you put them in wild card then? Because you don't know. But if, it's, if I know it's Grizzly, then it's going into front runners. Join mm. me. Even with five of them. Well, Do you think the shaman's the healer? Oh no, the the priest is gonna be the healer. So it's gonna be like what? Ellie shaman? Or enhancement? What we? What, I don't know what like is best to. <sighs> 
uh, be used if it's Ellie or, or enhancement. Yeah, I, I would enhancement, just, I think. Yeah, I think you're trolling if you go elemental. You just got to drink. Even drink walking, you're probably going to be in combat the whole time, right? I think our shaman is going enhancement as well. Um, maybe he goes Ellie. I don't know. He is listed as hybrid. Say he maybe he just plays enhanced, but the thing is, bro, even enhanced just goes oom, <laughs> like with one earth shock. Maybe yeah. they just auto attack and save everything for heals, uh, and they've got do, they bring totems to the group. Do enhancement shamans fight pretty hard over the hunter? Because I mean, it looks like the gear distribution is pretty solid for this group. There's not real like any real overstacking other than the shaman and the hunter. So like gear distribution is gonna be great throughout the entire experience of this team. So they're gonna be more beefed up. Yeah, that's what fishing comes in for. Sure. This is true, but I'm saying off the juicy blues, yeah, yeah, you know, in that sure. dungeon. I like it, man. Yeah, they, this is our this is our sleeper grizzly, ex grizzly member group, WCYD. That's what we'll see. What also, these guys can do. I, I also think they're the only team without a six. So these guys are like, we're five and we're locked in. There's like, like yep. there's about six teams with only five right now. Hmm. I thought that was their edge. I was like, put them on a sleeper. Maybe maybe <laughs> these are the boys. Yeah, 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 I like it. Okay, Les, we'll, I, I like your take. If this is Grizzly, we're going to put these guys in the front and see if they live yeah, up to Yeah, and then if they're not Grizzly, we'll just say sorry later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, we've got C Super Lethal Outstanding Warriors. Slow. we got Mr. Gordon Ramsay, our, co our, our host in here. You got anything to say about this group? Can you give us some insight, Gordon? Well, we're definitely not rocking a bunch of intellect in this group. Because our mage actually quit yesterday. Uh oh, Intel, jeez. Wait, so you're a five man? You heard it here first, folks. If we are. You heard it here first. Hot off the presses. Kakenrecht is off of super lethal outstanding warriors. It's a tragic day. So it's like a quadruple entendre, though, because like a lot of us, like I'm kind of slow in the head. <laughs> but we also might try to go slow and steady, you know, just get to circuit five and then pump. So, you know, I mean, we, we got some sweaties in there. Okay, I might have been fishing for 18 hours yesterday. We'll <laughs> but uh, I, we, we actually have a strategy that if we could pull it off, it's going to be groundbreaking. But, you know, we Are also... Are you done have... to leak? leak no, I'm not leaking it, bro. It is groundbreaking. Come on, we have the people here. Come on, give the people what they want. <laughs> These people want the strats. Info is, give it to info them. is out there. You just got to find it, okay? That's all I'll say. I'm looking, there's some big players in here, guys. Calyx yeah. was one of the four tanks in Road to Rag. I'm proud of all those tanks. I was a part of that tanking squad. None of our tanks died. Uh, Calyx had, is a gamer. Had, you had one, two, three, four people in on the rag kill. Yeah. It was With insane. Was, wow. Blinderer. Blinderer wasn't one of the deaths. He was on Druid. He was one he? of the deaths. He was. Yep. He would never well, forget. you know where to put this team. <laughs> <laughs> we know where to put this team. They they make it to circuit five and throw. Oh. What do you guys think? You guys think God uh, God's here or front runners? Front Zid runners. I gotta say front Zidane. Runners? He was the he was one of if he was one of two or the only one that soloed tribute hunter runs in Road to Rag as well. Oh, so that was really fun. They, they, this guy's sweaty, man. This group All right, is God's sweaty. here. God's here. Sweaty. Bottom of God's here, top of front runners. Uh, I'm down yeah. for either of those. It's, it's close. Matter because like you said, we're gonna. They did just lose their mage today. Can we put them at top of front runners? We're gonna. <laughs> under whatever and overperform you know i can't even think Gordon, of the word gordon's underselling himself man i can't yeah, even he's he's underselling himself. all right we'll put a we'll put him at the yeah front yeah and yeah. yeah, that felt good when you had it right there that felt good yeah <laughs> that felt good okay all right look out for slow guys next we have work in progress another alliance team full engineering by the way five man team no wall team. i like this. yeah i respect this the is five. solid mm -hmm. It's solid. I like the comp. I don't know enough about anyone individually to be able to make a, a real call on these guys. Um, that could be a good thing. Um, all, so, ga all gas, no breaks. This is. I, I feel like most teams have had two heals. Paladin's putting all the weight on his back, but he is a Paladin. Mm -hmm. He's got Bob, his own bubble. Uh, but they don't oom. So, I mean, as long as you control the aggro, Paladin's, not, Paladin's hey, gonna dude. have heals. Yeah, so I think the whole group wisdom for himself. He he yeah. auto attacks like his auto attack is super strong in the first two or three circuits. Yeah, yeah. I think this is a very safe group. Like you, you're not gonna see some crazy strats I think from this, but this is like we're gonna get in there and we're gonna clear it. Like this is a comp that is we're trying to get a circuit five, and like we're just gonna get through. Mm. And that's why mm. I think they're gonna be a contender because yep. 
I'm, I'm pretty sure they're betting, and this is how my team is betting. We're gonna bet that other people are gonna make mistakes through leveling, or they're going to try to push the envelope and make a mistake on over pulling. And we think just getting to the end is actually gonna be getting to first. So at this comp looks like this is just deed up on everything. Buffs, yeah, I like it. safety, CC, control. I like it, hell yeah. You've talked me into it. I was gonna go wild card, but the, the one of the reps is in the chat saying they're speedrunners too. So I think uh, contenders is a good call. I like it, I like it. Good take, Shobek. Jeez. Next the we have boys. The, the Balding <laughs> Eagles. I almost want to analyze God, their name next. more than their comp, to be honest. <laughs> and look at their logo. Jeez. I'm sorry, the like me in three years. Immediate wild card, right? Immediate wild card. Immediate wild card for me, too. I think it's, imme it's immediate wild card. Not even going to give them a chance, man. Immediate Don't judge card. a book by Bro, its cover. Come on. Well, that's not, it's not a bad thing to win a wild card, card, no? You're, Bro, you're on the RMP. highway and you're going 90 miles an hour. Wild card pops out of the back seat. I cut the brakes. <laughs> I'm the wild card. So you never know. Dude, these guys are running RMP in vanilla. Like, these guys are the absolute <laughs> wild card, okay? Like, <laughs> They're running RMP in vanilla. <laughs> it's literally like it's Warrior Pally and then RMP. This is broken, dude. These guys are, you don't know what to expect. <laughs> uh, that's what, this is our front runner wild card pick right here, man. Yeah, man. This, is what, this is my favorite logo right here, by the way. Also, like, I feel I feel okay with this. Well, first of all, wild card's not a bad thing. And two, I feel okay laughing with them because they made themselves the balding eagles and made that logo. So there's no way they take themselves too seriously, you know? <laughs> oh, man. Don't sleep on the wild cards for sure. I want to see balding eagles, balding eagles in Circuit 5, baby. Let's see them. Next, we have Hellfire Club. By the way, Hellfire Club, we just got an update live a moment ago. We saw two of members from Hellfire Club fishing in Stone Talon for green gear. Right off the bat, these guys obviously know what it takes to win. They're sweaty. They're bedridden, unemployed. <laughs> You're ready to game, man. <laughs> these guys heard this $5,000 on the line. They said, hey, I'm, he I'm here for the win. Uh, we have a full six-man team. Again, no dedicated tank. They're going ally. They've got the pally that they need. What what else do we see in this, this group comp? All in. They're going to go warlock tank is the big thing I see with these guys. Warlock hunter tank. Yeah, why not? Why not? I really want to see because I, I think that warlock hunter. I feel like these pet tanks shine whenever you're over leveled in some of these dungeons. Like in circuit one, the hunter and warlock pets will take literally no damage and they hold threat so well guys like whenever the pets are one or two levels higher than the elites they perform extremely well uh, and so i don't know if their strategy changes in some of these circuits uh, by the end of bfd the last boss will probably be four levels higher than you um, and maybe the strat changes mid-circuit but hellfire yeah that's up. what i was gonna say like mm -hmm. once you get to the last dungeon in the circuit when you're kind of just banking on these kind of alt tanks um it could kind of like bite them but again we're betting on the Druid tank. That is going to be totally fine to be able to tank something mm. three or four levels higher. Um, so we just got to kind of see how it plays out. But they're going to be buffed. I mean, there's plenty of buffs going around with this comp. Like, everything's going to be meaty. Mm. I Ooh. like it. S slight detour. I just got a biz cloak, boys. Let's go. Oh, Rats, <laughs> Rats, what did you get? What cloak? The web wing cloak in Stone Town, dude. I was yeah. AFK fishing and I almost died to the the rare spawn. So Getting you, you the on the spawn. podcast. <laughs> wait, 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 you guys want to see this? Hang on. I told you I'm fishing all the time. We gotta go. Let's take a live look. See what's happening in Stone Town. Eight hundred people know the timer. God. Oh. Jordan. Oh no. Look how many people are here. Speaking of Hellfire Club, this is one of their members, Skeppo the Warlock. He's here for it, man. That's a strong beard. I think these guys are going to go far. He's seen a lot. I wish I could inspect him, but he's <laughs> ally, man. Look at this guy. Skeppo HFC. That's the face of a winner right there. Look at the knowledge on that gnome. True. Oh, my God. Many, many years I've been a gnome. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, these guys, I almost want to put them in front runners. I've almost dug myself into it. I feel like they, or, or where would you guys, where would you I mean, the fact face? that they're, it's really, if they weren't, if they weren't actively fishing currently, they'd be lower on the list, but. Yeah, two of their members have been fishing the last 24 hours, man. 
Mm -hmm. Solid team, man. It's a solid team. Where, where would you put him? You don't like you don't don't seem to like that pick, Les. And and what do you guys think? End of front runners, top of contenders, or what do you think? I like end of front runners. End I mean, of front runners. I mean, okay. if they're if they're if they're fishing, contenders, you know. Contenders. All right. All right. Well, then they're my they're my top contender pick. Hellfire, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh. No, I don't know. No, I don't know. No, I feel like it's like it's like if do these guys have any back history, right? Like, do we know have they been in Road to Rag? Do That's they true. have we don't you know, know, like if they don't have that prior knowledge, then we don't necessarily know what they've achieved before. Mm. Okay, they're fishing, they're trying, they're actually doing the things to require to get this. Okay, cool. Then we know they're another bracket. So if we don't have that prior history, I think they're a contender. Because we just don't know their limits, mm -hmm. but they're doing what we're doing right now to prep. So I, that's why I think we, it's a we need we need to know more about Hellfire Club. We need good take. We need team interviews, man. Uh, mm -hmm. To be determined, guys. Look out for Hellfire Club. Maybe we bring them on the next around the forge and learn more. Maybe we'll put them at the top of contender. All right. Next we have the Iron Forge Drunk Tank. Wild card. <laughs> <laughs> Similar to the Balding Eagles, uh, we got an instant wild card take from my man Les. Do you guys judge a book by a cover again? The drunk tank and i think these guys uh, i i know this i know this type of player uh, i join into raid they're not there necessarily to pump they're there to have a good time they're there to have a drink they're there to kick back they just got done with the nine to five uh, they get one play session a week and they're sipped up during raid some of my favorite individuals iron forge drunk tank i think it's pretty obvious yeah that's for sure wild card <laughs> yeah, and this is definitely a stream because you have to have a streamer. The names and everything around drinks, bro, you're welcome. Yep. Yeah, and you have to have a streamer. So, like, this is going to be a stream you definitely do not want to miss. These boys are either memeing on the drunk or they're going all in on the drunk. And mm. they're going to be pulling up drunk, the in-game <laughs> drunk, and IRL drunk. Mm. They're not going to be able to see in-game, too. They're going to be fucking wibbling and wobbling. It's going to be a good time, man. These guys are going to go crazy. Functioning alcoholics, man, are like my favorite <laughs> type of person. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look out for these guys, man. The Iron Forge drunk tank. Uh oh. Uh, we're a little biased. A little yeah, biased, biased here. here. No CC. Another horde group. I, I, let me let me try and give some insight to this. I tried to convince everyone to go horde because I couldn't stand leveling ally. Uh, I swear, there's no strategy behind this. Uh, I think. Th we're just a bunch of friends coming together playing our best classes. Um, Carver's the fact pretty that you happy. Just said there's no strategy behind this. There isn't. It, it was, hey guys, let's all play together. Well, you got I thought I was going to play our best class. Team, but... You know, it's really interesting because we talked a little bit about this comp, and it's like, you guys are so good, but that actually might even be the crux because how are you guys going to control DPS? How are you guys going to control threat? Like, mm. all of you guys are so good, especially if Bobka. You think Bobka's gonna let up on a le uh, on the on the meter? Absolutely not. Yeah, right, dude. Exactly. He's you know. So, I think this is gonna be a comp where the strats are gonna be always adapting. Like every pull is gonna be either super clean or absolute chaos. Mm -hmm. And but you guys have the ability to manage the chaos, which is why I think this is an absolute god tier comp because all the guys know how to manage the chaos. Mm. Let me let me brag on a couple of my members here. Um... Bobka, yeah, he's not gonna slow down. I think honestly, I was thinking about this. I haven't talked to him. Me and Bobka are gonna, we're gonna just take mobs down one at a time. He's gonna backstab, I'll shred, and Tactics is gonna soak two or three mobs, always be generating rage. Uh, Carb is gonna be doing hunter things, pulling ahead. Dustbone, guys, I can't talk about this guy. He's our dark horse in the runner. Uh, you may not know this guy's name. Um, I've done like some TBC private server runs with this guy, Dustbone, and sometimes you play with a healer. And they leave an impact on you that I, I've never played with another healer like Dust. You just don't die whenever he's in your group. So I'm excited to see him on Shaman. Um, I really think that Tactics being a speedrunner, he's got that speedrunner intuition. Um, it, even if you have the best strategy in the game, you need someone that's going to push the envelope. And I think Tactics is going to push us to the limit. Bobka is going to push us to our limit. Mm -hmm. I feel like Cargos and I are like the friendly, fun group guys. And we pump, but we also throw somehow. Um, and I think Tactics and Bobka are going to keep us in line. And Dustbone are going to keep us in line. Then we have Les. Um, all the, on the alternate at the moment, um, he's going to fill into some of these dungeon runs where it makes sense. We don't want to leak all the strats. Uh, but 
it really came down to let's play our best class and i think in these circuit runs guys you can be as min max as you want i think if you just show up and you perform on your best class the best that you can you're going to be a contender no matter what um, i actually don't think that anyone had like this group does not have a tank for the whole first circuit Mm -hmm. I think it's literally just every player pulling two to three mobs at a time mm -hmm. individually and kiting it backwards through the whole dungeon or forwards. <laughs> I'm so excited, dude. Like I don't think I don't think there's a tank. I think it's just every man yeah. for themselves for the whole for the whole dead minds. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I mean I, I mean the, the talent is there. I think I think if, if Boca and Tactics weren't on this team. I'd be more afraid of how we're going to pan out. <laughs> um, yeah. But with Tactics and Bobka, I mean, Tactics just had Tactics himself just, I think, I think puts it God tier. Tactics isn't going to let us lose. Tactics That's what I'm gonna, saying. It's going to eat him up alive if we lose. So, so as much as, uh, I, as much as we'll get memed on, I do think tact the, the Tactics free agent signing put this team into God tier for me. World first hogger death in Red Rag, though. <laughs> But it was and then came first, back though. and got world first six. <laughs> <laughs> the double, the two-time world first. True. I don't know, man. Um, I can't put us. I can't even put us at front runners. I, I feel like the addition of myself. <laughs> well, it's a wild card. A wild card. It's, it's <laughs> tough. I, I think it's a wild card, but at the same time, like. I remember when Vanilla came out, that was a comp. Like, if you were a warrior or rogue, you literally just looked for a melee cleave and you just banked on Wind Fury. Like, once you guys get Wind Fury, that's what I'm saying. The, the, like, your your speed in runs is going to be unreal. Like, you're going to be flying through everything with just the amount of procs. Again, every the aggro is going to be all over the place, but you guys have the ability to control it. That's why I think it's a god tier team because when I was just literally hearing about the comp, I immediately adopted it. It just like clicked in my mind. Yes. Win Fury, let's bank on this. Mm -hmm. And I we it didn't play out too well for us, but I think this <laughs> this this team has a lot better, I would just say like a lot more fuller uh rounded players on it, and they know what they're doing, and I think it's gonna be A or B, like at the top or a wild card. Like God like, or wild card. I like wild card. Yeah, I mean, no one thought me and Gorgos were going to make it to 60 uh, in our duo and saw him. And you just want to be slept on. Uh, luckily, you we just want to You just oh, want to prove everybody wrong. Grace. Luckily, we clutched it, man. <laughs> hey, Shobek, you said that it didn't work out for you. Should we uh, Should we take a look at oh, the yeah. Shobek clip? This is, and look, look, this will happen. So, like, a, a really interesting thing that I learned about vanilla rating is there are quirky things. And literally the game has mechanics and you have to abide by them because they will punish you and a random moment can happen like this and uh this is why again we are banking on just completing it i've never done a hardcore 60 none of my teammates have done a hardcore 60 and so we were like all right let's not do this let's just go for completion because you guys have done the 60s yeah so you know things a little bit more but when you run this clip and you look at just how things can just change on a dime in half a global yeah, no, Wait, what I'm saying. So, Shobek, you're new to hardcore. You're level 13. You're fighting Taragamon in a four-man group, underleveled. What do you? Dude. Listen, bro. We were trying to build up the group synergy, man. Yes. All right. We were we were four manning RFC. We're like, yo, let's let's kind of get this thing filled out. And uh, we were just like, yo, let's just send it and let's do it. Um, and we learned that. Uh, very quickly things can it was a great experience because <laughs> this is how it's gonna look like Joy. maybe circuit three and circuit four on the last dungeons where now you're at a level yes you have more of an expansive kit but you're at a level where the the, the mobs are going to be doing more damage and it's going to be a little bit more intricate so this is like allowing us to emulate what happens in a worst case scenario and how does our comp and how do our players function in that environment and we didn't like how that felt we didn't like <laughs> how at, at all how that felt let's see this play out uh, show back ladies and gentlemen if Tom jam hamstring if you can please get ready to get a totem down when's nova when's nova i i don't have any timer right now, but I that's on me i'm dead i'm dead no, you're not <laughs> oh you pulled out your i think <laughs> Oh Bro, God. double haste parry, man. Keep going, you keep can't going make in. it up. 
double really haze parry. I liked how during oh, that run, I'm motor parry him. Wasn't your team just was speaking through a walkie-talkie the whole time, <laughs> and as the panic ensued, it just felt like actual like radio comms of just like, I don't know, man, we're going <laughs> down. This is really bad. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get out of here. So the classic, bro. the classic gamer pose. No, man. we can kill it for sure. I mean, like, just look where we're at, right? Like, dude, we're already kind in this guy it's so jam, far bro. back. Like. Damn, the it has hit the fan at this point <laughs> like all strat like we're just reacting bro um but seriously like this is like a it's kind of like a, a way to see how things can just turn and like weird things can happen and we just didn't like it we just didn't like it we felt um with salvation no threat no sort of worries with aggro it can just be on because before you don't see it in the clip aggro's changing forever it's on the warrior it's on the shaman all right drop the totem we have to kite now the warrior it's back on the warrior or the hunter and we have to like make sure everyone's in range for heals because they're half health and it was just chaos and so through that we were able to see yeah we probably don't have the abilities to you know actually pull this comp off let's just organize our threats make everything clean and just we want this mob to hit this person and if we can control that variable we're gonna be clear on the dungeon, no matter what level. This guy is, we had like a level 11 healer and this dude, I can't see the level of him, but mm -hmm. we were able to do it. But that's the whole reason why we ended up swapping. We just wanted to control who the person is hitting and go for completion. I like it, man. Face yeah. takes all the way around, man. Show back, look out for him. Uh, you, 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 you're, you're normally a PVP player, right? And so you're kind of dipping yeah. toes into you just get an excuse to do the PVE content, man. Well, I, look, look, I've been a vanilla. So once vanilla ended, I was in vanilla servers. I played every single yeah. vanilla server. I love vanilla PVE. It's just this hardcore plus tournament style has just swooped me off my feet straight up. Like it is, it feels like arena. Like it really does. Like doing this whole thing just feels like one gigantic arena for me. And, um, there's a lot of things to learn about just vanilla pve and how things work and um it is just a whole new game a whole new it. game for us i love that space take bro you have such good takes it's so fun having a, a fresh hardcore play right now but uh, definitely not fresh to vanilla but it's it's fun that the yeah. game mode is shaking up the meta like you said enough next we have oh. vidir enjoyers yo do we is this another judge the book by its cover group cut out for a second it sounded like but what is, what is Vidir? yeah they, they got the Vidir quest it, does everybody know what this quest is yeah the do Vidir you know what no but what i do know i don't know if you guys noticed this this was the very first team i believe that signed up these were the guys so i think this team Join knew me. everything that they wanted setup wise professions wise because i remember that icon when i looked at the thread on discord I believe this is the first team that signed up. So they were like out the gate. They know who they wanted, what they wanted to run and how they're going to do it. And I think they're already like pre-prepped, but I don't know any of the names. This is okay. There, there were some, as Cargos will call them, some uh, rising individuals on the hardcore scene. An another wave, another tier. Unchained, there's been these mock garages that have been going on in the hardcore community hosted by Stone Coat. Big shout out to him. Unchained has won back-to-back -back level 20 warrior, level 20 shaman mock garage. He's a gamer. He's a sweater. Again, unemployed bed rate. Like, this guy is sweating, man. Unchained, if he's in a group. I recognize a lot of these names, too, from HC Elite, I think. Pigs and Rizoku. Kat. Yeah, Rizoku. Pigsy. Didn't, he, didn't, didn't Rizoku get abandoned in Road to Rag whenever he fell yes, off that bridge? Yeah, he fell off the bridge <laughs> in Louvers, and they just left him there. This group is kitted, except when there's a bridge around, bro. <laughs> Yeah, man. The, I recognize a lot of these names. They went full NG. Pigsy is set. Okay, everyone's saying Pigsy is a big feral enjoyer. You know. Seven sixties, I think, in Elite. Mm, you know they're a big time feral enjoyer whenever they go leatherworking just for Wolf's Head Hell, man. Like, they, the, this is the type of Druid player that's built diff. They, they see the value in Wolf's Head. I'm taking I've talked the, myself into gods here on the scene. Like, really? Yeah. I'm gods taking my. Here, gods here or front runners? But. You, you think. Unchained's gonna lose a 1v1 against an NPC when he doesn't lose a 1v1 against them. another True. NPC. True. True. I think this team I think this team needs the, the clout. I think I, like not needs but like deserves it. You know what I mean? Like this team deserves to be hyped up. I, I think mm -hmm. I think these guys are really, really good. I think they're really sound players. I think the comp is fine. Um 
Yeah, I, I, I think, and, and, here, and here's a take, and here's a take, and I'll say this as a blue bar, Andy. This comp, this team, is on is on Gnome Fryer's shoulders. Can Gnome Fryer play the level of mage required to keep up with the rest of this team? Um, and that's not to say they can't. I'm just saying that's that's the level that the, the mage needs to be able to play at. There's going to be times where they walk into a room and they go, Gnome, kill everything in this room. We'll see you later. And, like, Gnome's going to have to be able to do that. So... Mm. Um, will they be able to? I think that's the question. But if if they are, then then I think this team's got to. That's so, really interesting. So you're saying people are going to utilize mage to literally micro mage AOE farm massive pulls while the other team splits off and continues to clear? No, I mean so at least in dead mines, <laughs> right? Like let, let, let's just say a world in dead mines, right? Like you run into dead mines, you basically can pull the entire first two rooms into the boss if you have a mage. Because anything with non-elites in it, mage just goes insane. But aren't there the elite pats when some of them are casters? So I guess the yeah, yeah, team yeah, would pull that. Yeah, but you just that. have the team. You have the team yeah. focusing the elites, and then you just have the mage solo farming. Yeah. I've um, seen some crazy mage solo strats. I've seen the ZF graveyard mage farm I, strats. I want to see a team do that. Can that a mage... No one's ever really thought about this, but can a mage solo the stair event? <laughs> No. Yeah, it's really interesting because you can pretty much utilize a mage now to kind of buff up your mob kill. So you can have the main four actually mm -hmm. clear the dungeon, and then the mage is going off doing the micro pulls, just getting to the threshold. And then he really? just meets back up on the... He either meets back up for the boss kill, or it's literally just totally separate. Like, the whole goal for the mage is just to do two or three pulls in the dungeon. Wow. Could be. Could be. Interesting. Yeah, man. It, what I don't like, uh, these two god tier picks, they are both alliance teams. They're both HC60 elite veterans. I, I recognize all the names. I'm actually getting a little intimidated by these two teams. Man. They, these are stacked. They're Yolt teams. Uh, look out for, for Vidir and Joyas. Card. Best name. <laughs> <laughs> and also no shark. And also there was no shark. Mischievous rural squirrels, and also there was no shark. If there's anything with my boy Jerome in, you insta wild card it, bro. Yep, <laughs> absolutely. This guy insta wild card. Facts about even I think he knows more random facts than WoW than Nom Nom, bro. Does the shaman buff up the warlock and mage in any way? Like, what the totem that they give? It's like the mana totem, right? So they don't go. Um? Yeah, I'm trying to think of how expensive it is, or if you're just moving so much. I don't know how effective Mana Spring Totem ends up being. Because it literally is just the warrior, so it looks like they're trying to full spell cleave and then just buff up and beef up all the casters, so they have infinite mana, which means infinite control, infinite appeals, and um, this is like a pretty solid comp. Jerome's I can't play it because I'm a rogue player, but this seems pretty solid. He's going to be making guides live on like, how to do hardcore all stars circuits and farm the most gold per hour while doing it. Like, the guy just he cranks out content, bro. Jerome, we will die to Ragnaros, man. I love the logo, I love the name. And there's also no shark. There's also no shark. And with that, wild card. Or we can, if we can get a live feed, see if anyone's are fishing. Oh, do we have one of these guys mm. from Mischievous Squirrel? Should we take one more look inside Stone Tower? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll catch them next time. Are, are they on NA or EU? They might be in A. They're yeah. NA, I think. Okay. Let's check the, the next team. Tarmusi and the Kitty Cat Trolls. Goaded team logo, by the way. I, I really like the border. Uh, seen a couple teams use this one. We've got a Horde team. Mage is full in on tailoring right here. Flip mode. I'm trying to think. Do, do you recognize I know any flip of these mode? Things? I know Link it. Yeah. Gold solid. Tarmusi. I could see this team being top contenders, low front runners. I could see this team. Maybe even. You know what? You know what? Actually, let me let me let me explain this very quickly. I feel like flip mode and Link it are great players, but they're not going to fly off the page. Is the, is the best player? Like you don't. Not everyone really has been exposed to them yet. And I feel like that's the definition of a sleeper pick. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. This is a team that I want to hear more about. This is a team that I want to interview and get an idea of what their players look like, what their experiences with hardcore. Because uh, this is your comp. I mean, the mage is a sub, but this is mm. your comp. Yep. This is, this is oh, wow, you exactly. know, no CC. 
Mm -hmm. right? So depending on the talent on this comp, it can either be absolute S tier or you're going to burn and crash and die and just wipe. So it's a flip. It's how they play it. That's so right. Yeah. They... It's funny that we came up with it. I swear we came up with our comp just because it's what we wanted to main, but maybe it is good. <laughs> we'll put these it was the I best for not. leveling. I actually I actually think our comp's goaded, bro. I actually, I, I'm fully coked out on the team. Like, honestly, I'm fully coked out on our team. The oh, bias yeah. is real for me right now. I'm fully coked out. I'm looking out for kitty cat trolls. Next, uh, around the forge that we do, we need to get team captain, a couple of these guys in here mm -hmm. and hear more about these guys. Let's look at Zug Life. Got not no way, dude. Oh, this is dirty. The, okay, we we've had some veterans, some HC elite members. We've had some god tier picks. This is all time greats. This yep. is veterans at its finest in this uh, in this community. Chadley Hank, cheesy Stone Coat, Nova HC, Rose Goku, who all, all these guys have played in guilds together in TBC, and then. Need I say more? Nom Nom HC, the 23, maybe 24 time level 60 legend at this point. My man doesn't stop leveling. He branded the term Skittles. He knows everything about the game. He is an Alliance main, somehow got convinced to roll Horde. Um, but these guys have been in the hardcore community since day one, and they have all come together to go. Uh, to go Zug Life. I'm just I'm just yeah. can't believe that they surprised Nom Nom to go Horde. Look at the chat. The chat's popping off. With this team man yeah they, think, these, these guys are fan favorites. favorite they, this for is sure. this is fan favorite team i think i think i mean it's god tier man god tier you just give respect where respect if, is due if you live, god -tier, man. call someone the greatest of all time they have to be a god tier right yeah if there's the literally the goat leveler of hardcore because i think that's what we're I think that's what we're missing in some of this too. Like this is a leveling challenge on top of everything. And this team statistically I'd say is the most likely to make it all the way to 60. Okay. You take, okay. These guys are in the bag. Going to complete all the circuits I, I, guaranteed. I think these guys, if you have any team highest survivability rate of any team, this team has the highest survivability rate. You put the house on it. These guys aren't going down. Uh, I mean, we're, uh, we're really, yeah, we're really yeah, talking yeah. these guys up, man. They got some high expectations. Dude, I up think, to. I, I think they just have the high. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think the the survivability rate of a lot of these teams is like 55, 60 percent at best. Like, I think our team is a 55 percent chance to make it, <laughs> right? Like, but these guys are like 63 percent, right? Like, they're just they have a little bit more than everybody else. Um, they're ready to rock and roll for sure. Um, I'd actually put them. Yeah, they're 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 probably the second. But they're my number two pick uh, in, in, in all the teams here. I like it, man. I like it. That's Zug Life. We'll, we'll see what the veterans can do. Next, we have Gamma. Another Alliance it's, team. I saw Jonah, and I was like, wait, is that Jonah Guides? There's no way. That's what I thought, too, at first, but I, I don't think it is. This team has a lot of people like that. Like, is that Surrey HC, the Paladin from HC Elite? I don't know. But if it is... Yeah, yeah, I recognize that. I feel like I recognize the name Pew Pew as well. Double tailoring, hunters leatherworking. I mean, does that? I mean, that that should hurt the team, right? They only have two engineers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's. I want to go. I want to go sleeper here, just because I feel like they have to have something down. More. They could exceed expectations, maybe with, with the professional yeah. picks. Maybe they they've got um, something up their sleeve. These guys, yeah, definitely sleepers. This is another team that I want to hear more about. I want to see more. Yeah, Surrey HC. Mm -hmm. I recognize that name in HC Elite all the time. Uh, mm -hmm. sure, I want. Sure I want an interview. Me. I want to follow up on Gamma. Mm -hmm. We'll put these guys in the sleeper comp. All right. Next we have Westfall. Westfall Wallabies. Well, it doesn't have a rogue, so you know my vote. <laughs> 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 Uh, I think the the warrior with alchemy. I mean, I guess that's a solid choice, right? It just gets more beefed up. True. This is like a hardcore spell cleave, right? Like you kind of count a hunter as a spell cleave, kind of maybe. You got your warlock mage priest. Yeah, um, maybe the warrior's a sit. Maybe the warrior's not even the tank. Imagine that druid goes boomkin with this group. <laughs> oh, jeez. He could. 
Gordon, you and I both know Boomkins don't have any place, <laughs> any role in these. <laughs> yeah, games. that's what I said. Imagine, but. <laughs> Dude, someone needs to do it. Do they really not have a place? Because if, if they don't, someone, like Grace, you need to, bro. I don't want to be that guy. I be wanna... the hero. Is this, uh, is this, are we feeling wild card or sleeper with these guys? It's a mixed bag on both. I'm kind of feeling, uh, they look like they have their, uh, their professions locked in properly. And I mean, they, they're just like the meta classes across I, the board. I, I feel like these guys all know each other in real life. I feel like their logo in the bottom left is all what their in-game um, comparison would be. I feel like these guys might be sleepers. Mm -hmm. okay. And if we circle back, guys, what is it? Alliance, no paladin, giga chads. Mm. True. Has to be. True. Is this, this was the one group or there was one more group? There's another one. There, yeah, there's one other group that went alliance without. All right, we're going to put these guys in sleeper. Westfall Wallabies, look out for these guys. The missing diplomats, the bad boys oh, yeah, of yeah, hardcore, yeah, the, the spice. You love to see it. Edgy group right here. We got edgies. <laughs> we got aid. Oh, big brother aid. This guy's a pumper druid. I think Gordon, you guys share. Um, you guys have both died in MC on trash pulls, right? Uh, well, no, I didn't. I haven't died in MC yet. Oh, but you died in ZG. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Aid Aid isn't afraid to push the envelope, man. Aid's a pumper. Um, he's playing warrior, but yeah, maybe that. Yeah, he's the tanking role. I like that. We got Edgy's longtime hardcore elite player, Big Brother. He's been around um, since Road to Rag. He's still playing a lot of hardcore 60. They, this is where all the spice is coming from. He he likes he likes playing all aspects of the game. Um, Lot Kai and Laron. I don't know if I recognize these guys, but I imagine they all have been in HC elite at some point. Um, yeah, Lot's got like five sixties. These guys are going to be rotating target dummies every pool. Every actually, pool. You know what? Besides edgies, actually, I don't know who Loran is. Just between these six people, I think they have 2360s in HC Elite. Yeah, bro. Let's put them gods here yes, and let, here. let the toxicity <laughs> run. Let's put them gods here and just let it. Let them yeah. you know, give it to them. Give it to them. Give them the respect. Give it to them. See if they can give live up to, to the expectations. Give it to them, baby. Give it to them. Okay, missing diplomats. We got high hopes for you. Next, we've got. Who wants to take this one? Well, is that Gordon Ramsay? <laughs> was I that your profile pic? <laughs> that was Gordon <laughs> Ramsay, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta show my break. Oh, wait, you can see it right there on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> that is funny. Um. <laughs> yeah, I'm thrown off by Gordon, man. I can't say anything more. Like, you do me like that, bro? <laughs> <laughs> They've got death think, of feels on their mustache. Boy, they, they, got... this guy's might be edgier than the missing diplomat group. Yeah, no, I, I guess... think we got, um, I think we got, you know, Alliance. You got six people. Or you got five people, rather. Uh, I think that's kind of going to be scary. You got, you got RMP, like you were talking about earlier, Shobek. Um... I think this team, I, I go sleeper here. Um, I want to see more out of them. I don't know mm. enough about them yet. Um, business seems to have a bit of a fan base in the chat, so we'll see how that goes. It might just be his homies hyping them up. We'll see. Um, hey. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But I think, I think I'd go sleeper here, but I'm not 100% sure. I like it. I like that too. Got to find out more. We got to get these guys on one of these around the forge. Um, there, there's a lot of these teams that we need to know more about, man. Narga Hennis, look out for these guys. Ooh, is this a fan favorite? This is a this is a fun name, man. We got the Gold Shire Gangsters. The Benny Blanco boys over here, dude. Babies. Well, what's what's up with these last couple teams? Let's see. Bear, long shot, easy mage, peak J side, Din. I like this team. I think this team's comps great. I think we got a lot of NG. You know what? Also, we got the blacksmithing warrior on this one. I feel like I feel like this could be Harlo pretty interesting. I've seen Tactics do a self-made warrior run. Parla, uh, I think, has looked into do it. I think I, I feel like I watched Parla do a self-made blacksmithing warrior run. And because this is a solo self-found challenge up to 60, you can't trade with your group. Um, I heard that there is a there's a lot of good weapons. I'm not sure what the shields look like. There's a lot of good weapons you can craft, like 40 plus, um, and decent gear along the way. Might not be a bad pick, man. Especially if you're in a five-man team and depending on everybody else. Um, for Ng, why not go blacksmithing? That might be a sleeper decision. I like that he 
their tank is going BS. This is mm. the comp that we actually wanted to run, um, but we decided me on the rogue. Um, so I think this comp is looking really good. And you just have like the mage as the sub, most likely. Oh, I like it. We're top of contenders. Or, or you know what? I feel like uh, I, I don't know. Are we allowed to change anything right now? We can do anything. Or, or is it perma locked in? Oh, you want nothing is perma locked. Sure. I want to move Hellfire Club up the front runners, and I want to mm. put Goldshire mm. Gexes in contenders. I like that move. I yeah. support it. Yeah. Yeah. We want The longer we... I sat on Hellfire Club, I was like, they're front runners, man. Mm. I think it was a good, good choice. Yeah. Last. The slum lords. Certainly not least. Now is Zol is this Zolp the uh the EU warrior? It very well could be. I mean, this is this is uh Metagoblin's team. Or not that it's Metagoblin's on this team. I won't say it's Metagoblin's team, but it's just immediate wild card. Only one person out of 136 people is playing enchanting right now. And it's this guy. <laughs> or honestly it's God tier. It, statistically speaking, him going enchanting, it's past Calamity's team's giga brains. This person has foresight. If they're Act going for the enchant circuit five, oh. nope, nope. I just, I just disproved it. Actually, they don't have a blacksmith, so it's impossible for him to get increased rods. So he's gonna have terrible enchants. That's oh, great. Your life, Alex is. Think about it. Talix, uh, uh, Talix, is that the guy that I played with in Invictus, or is this a Hearthstone yes. legend? This is him, no gotta be. on priest, gotta be, and I've That's seen him. I... I've seen him in hardcore chats before. I think it actually is him. He's a really good priest. Oh, dude. and Zulp has expressed interest in hardcore before. He's been in my chat a couple times. I do with the monkey avatar picture, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but I, I doubt it's him because I feel like he just put the P on there. Right, you forget the fucking type the last of the letter, but. <laughs> But yeah, I think I, I just want to say I think that's who Talix is. Anyway, GGs, you guys are killing it. Yeah. No, I reckon I, I knew that I recognized the name Talix. Yeah, I actually this this was our um co raid lead, uh, and he did play priest. He was a yeah big oh. boomer energy who bumped man. Talix is a high quality player. We got Meta Goblin. Uh, I don't this I don't recognize some of the other names, but yeah. But if Talix and Meta Goblin are playing with them, there's got to be that's like a vouch, right? Yeah. Right? Is that not just like, is it ever that point where, you know, there's a couple good players on the team, you got to assume the other players are there too, right? Is it is it a, is it a front runner angle? Is it a contender angle? Or is this going to wild card just for the enchanting? Hmm. Well, I, I was mistaken and you can't even learn artisan training because you're past Oldman at that point and you can't go back in. So he's physically capped at 225 enchanting. So maybe he like leveled to 15 and did what I did where I learned something and then swapped over and then learned that you can't do that. And he was like, I ain't re-rolling. We're doubling down. <laughs> this is my penalty. identity. Give me the penalty. <laughs> I'm not re-rolling. So he <laughs> could just be buying the bullet. And they're that confident. They're like, bro, throw the profession. We don't need it. We, we could make the tier list even, slide them into front runners, but. I think I think it's a wild card, man. I think it, it, yeah. If, if, listen, if no CC is a wild card, this team is a wild card. <laughs> right. I and think you're trolling us, bro. We're down there still. I'm not over it yet. It's okay.